from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, the digital version, I'm Lisa Martin. I've got a CUBE alumni with me here now. Ronan Schwartz joins me from NetApp, the SVP and GM of Cloud Volumes. Ronan, it's nice to see that you're doing well and healthy. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to join you, even though it's virtually. It will be fun as well. It, oh, yes, it will. And that's one of the nice things with, with uh, this time that we're all trying to figure out is we have technologies like this to be able to still engage with partners, with customers, and there's been so much innovation that's gone. So I'd love to get your perspective on what's going on uh, with them. I know you guys had NetApp Insight just uh, a few weeks or a month or so ago, but talk to me about kind of some of the things that you're seeing in the market from a cloud adoption perspective. Um, so cloud, cloud adoption is actually not new. What we're seeing is a continuous acceleration of the cloud adoption. You know, um, you know, we kind of started by the fact that we are remote and I think definitely um, the pandemic, the need to work remote, engage remotely and so on, have actually even accelerated the adoption of cloud if something like that could even exist. I think what we are seeing uh, in NetApp and in the market in general is very fast adoption of cloud, the movement of uh, core, services, core workloads uh, into the cloud and organization that are not just adopting cloud, but actually innovating in the cloud faster than ever. What's been some of the conversations like with customers? Cause I know, you know, we've talked a lot about this in the last nine months, this acceleration of digital transformation and customers needing to pivot multiple times to not just survive during this time period or keep the lights on, but really be able to thrive and, and uh, push their business forward. Tell me, Talk to me about some of the customer conversations you have. Is this more of a business level conversation right now with respect to moving to cloud from a strategic standpoint? Because as every business suddenly had to, everyone's got to work from home, that was a big shift. Um, it, it is a major shift and, uh, and it's, uh, it's also for some organization, it's a very untrivial uh, change that needs to happen to the cadence of, uh, of doing business to, uh, to the, to the specific setting. And um, um, I think we all as individual kind of feel the, the change, right? I, I sometimes have like this huge urge to sit with my team and kind of whiteboard what needs to happen next. And um, it's a little bit different to do it uh, when, uh, when, it is a virtual, uh, when it is a virtual whiteboard. But if I take it into the conversation that we're having with customers, I think customers are, have moved from the first few months when it was a really about survival and how do I make the basic things work and ensure continuity into the place that organizations are looking to, to leverage the change and increase, uh, increase innovation, increase the, the transformation they've already been going through. Um, when it comes to these things, I really want to, um, there is a really good article from AWS that I want to share that is uh, really talking about uh, um, the six R of cloud adoption. And um, I really like, like that um, as an analogy because it talks about the fact that when you have cloud applications, you have the opportunity to re-host, really lift and shift them. You have the opportunity to re-platform, really design them from the cloud from scratch. Um, you have the ability to, uh, to refactor the applications, uh, meaning that uh, you're actually adopting certain cloud components. And in some cases you're actually repurchasing or really re or, or retiring applications. And in some places you just return, retain them on premise. So I think uh, organizations are looking into their current situation and they're basically choosing their strategy, not their strategy of adopting the cloud, but their strategy of how to move specific workloads into the cloud. Right, to be, to take advantage of many things, including cost optimization. So talk to me about the uh, NetApp partnership. You guys have been partners with AWS for seven plus years now. NetApp cloud volume platform for AWS. Talk to me about that. So um, NetApp has been a, a long term partner of AWS and uh, data is in the core of the cloud business and basically moving data to the cloud is also uh, super important. Um, and uh, NetApp is a company that has been a leader in cloud and data services uh, in general, have been there from almost day one. Uh, we've been building the, the capabilities from the cloud volume on top 
to the cloud volume service, which is a native service in AWS in the last few years. Basically our latest announcement that we made in, um, in our Insight event is putting all of that in a single platform, the cloud volume, um, the cloud volumes platform and uh, basically optimizing uh, optimizing it for the AWS users, meaning that the user with no additional effort can store data, receive uh, uh, access to the data in the performance needed for the right application, but also enjoy out of the box data services um, like backup, like um, uh, disaster recovery, like compliance, um, and like caching and so on. Really giving the different use cases the full support needed. What's, what are some of the changes and use cases that you've seen? You know, we talk about compliance. We just had another um, expansion of the California Consumer Privacy Act on our ballot during the last general election. We've seen ransomware on the rise. So talking about backup has been a big topic. Talk to me about some of those use cases that are shifting that you see that NetApp is helping customers address. Um, th this is a, an excellent question and I know sometimes uh, people treat storage as, uh, as infrastructure, but the truth is that the data on that storage is actually one of the most important assets that has moved into the cloud. And really building your data fabric with the right level of, uh, of governance and insurance for everybody is a really important thing. We just talked about like all of this acceleration of moving into the cloud. What that means is that the core data services are no longer optional. They could not be left to um, a specific implementation desire or no desire. They have to be built into the platform and kind of be ensured um, uh, in a continuous way. Absolutely, that data is, is gold or the new oil if companies can protect it, secure it, access it, and make sure that they can actually extract insights. So, and as we talk about and, and Gartner and analysts alike show the, pro, the projections of the volumes of data just growing and growing and growing. And now we've got companies that have gone from maybe 100% on-site operations to maybe 100% remote. We've got the expansion of cloud and the edge. There's a lot of changes going on there. And one of the things that we do know that's happening from an IT perspective is it's getting more complex. So talk to me about how you're working with customers to make things simpler as data volumes grow and as they're adjusting to a new world. Um, so sometimes maybe this is my opportunity to uh, to definitely correct one of the thinkings that some some of the AWS customers might have on NetApp, which is it's focused about storage only. The truth is that uh, there is a variety of services around infrastructure that we do that we go way beyond storage. I kind of mentioned in my last answer a few of them, like disaster recovery, like um, um, backup, um, and we just started to touch upon compliance, the ability to understand the data that is moving into the cloud, the exposure to PII, PCI, and how does it fit the different regulations. Um, but NetApp is also offering optimized computing with, uh, with our spot, uh, with basically our spot acquisition, spot by NetApp technology. And we're also offering a full um, virtual desktop service. And I'll use the last one as kind of the perfect example. If you would like to empower a thousand people to get their virtual desktops available, it has become a matter of, a, of a, a single click and full automation is giving you um, not only the virtual desktop, but also a dedicated storage that is optimized for that. So we're looking into a variety of services, all of them optimized to work on the AWS uh, cloud, all of that with out of the box, very easy configuration that empower everybody to basically do the right thing in the cloud. So when you're in customer situations and conversations, which I know you still are obviously virtually, and you're saying that, you know, we want to make sure that we really clarify. The NetApp has evolved dramatically since 1992. We've been talking about that for a long time. I used to work at NetApp and marketing back in the day. But when you're having these customer conversations, I actually, no, let's give me a customer, an example of some successful customers who really understand the values, full breadth value that NetApp delivers, especially in AWS environments. Um, I, I would divide the, the customers by in a, in a high level into, into three categories. You're seeing uh, basically application developers with a goal to deliver their application 
as fast as possible. And um, they're not only need, uh, their need is not just to do it as fast as possible, but they're trying to do it in the most uh, efficient, cost-effective way possible. So the next conversation with them is how can infrastructure empower them to do things better, faster, and cheaper? And then there is actually a list of, the, of these capabilities that are supporting them very, very well. An example will be that today a lot of the new developments are done, especially by the cloud natives, are done leveraging Kubernetes. So NetApp is giving you Kubernetes, um, Kubernetes optimized storage, Kubernetes uh, monitoring and resource optimization, and also with the ocean capabilities, the full ability to manage and optimize your containers. So this is kind of one group, the developers group, and there is actually thousands of these customers that are leveraging NetApp on AWS to deliver that. I think the second group is central IT, and central IT have a really tough job these days. They need at the same time to support the innovation as we discussed in the first use case, but also the lift and shift and move of the uh, critical applications. Um, when we're looking at, uh, when we're talking to central IT, we're, we're guaranteeing to them the same latency or closest possible latency, the same performance, the same scale that they had on premise, and even more in the cloud. So this is what allows the largest customers in the world to move their SAP from on-premise uh, to the cloud. Um, really, the, I think that the top five, um, the, um, at least five of the top 10 SAP applications are leveraging uh, NetApp as part of their, uh, as part of their cloud uh, journey. Um, Another example, and, and maybe the third example, is, uh, is basically an organization where they are putting an innovation in the cloud in parallel to their existing uh, on-premise uh, example. There, I think one of our reference customers is, uh, is Blackboard, the vendor that is offering something very relevant these days, which is remote learning and, uh, and capabilities like that. Um, well, they've actually built a very extensive on-premise uh, um, environment a lot of their new capabilities, a lot of the innovation is delivered in the cloud where scale is faster, the resources are available, are, are much easier, um, but they still need the power of the best of breed um, storage technology. They still are looking for cost-effective optimization and this is where NetApp is helping them. How do you kind of bridge the, the, um, the different groups, you know, talked about the developer groups and what they need and what they expect in a regular world versus central IT whose job, as you said, is now more challenging with this spread. How, how does the NAP help those two groups come together and really evaluate the opportunities that this new situation provides and how NetApp can help them accelerate that? So this is basically where the platform capabilities are, are playing a role. Um, a developer and also the DevOps organization are able to consume the right capabilities that they need in order to get their job faster. Well, central IT can go into the same platform and basically manage it from security, from um, backup, uh, from disaster recovery, and from performance, general performance perspective, including very easy uh, built-in automation to move um, the entire applications from dev to QA and, and into production. So the ability of, of basically the, um, the different users to have an optimized experience when the developers are looking for productivity, time to market, um, maybe even cost effectiveness. DevOps is looking for the automation, um, the, the agility, um, and, and basically uh, the, the life cycle. And then centrality is looking to optimize cost into the overall resourcing and, and really delivering it to multiple groups. Um, single platform give you everything in one place. Make it sound so easy. So last <laughs> question is, as we go into the year 2021, remember that joke last year, everyone said 2020, it's hindsight. We're going to know everything. Huh. I could care to forget a whole bunch of things, but as we move forward, and I think we're all counting on the clock changing and, and bringing good things. We've seen a lot of change. We've also seen a lot of opportunities uncovered. And you've talked about some of those. Talk to me about some of the things that NetApp and AWS customers can expect next year. Um, so we've been innovating together very, very fast. If I just look into the last few months, then um, you've seen AWS pushing um, Outpost into the market as kind of the edge of the of the cloud. NetApp have been an early partner of that, kind of coming together and saying that 
um, and, and really offering the best storage as, as part of the of outpost. I think what you'll see is uh, um, as we go into 2021 is uh, um, and the, the fast innovation and the expansion of the offering is going to continue into 2021. The things that both AWS and NetApp already have in progress are kind of ensuring that. So that wouldn't be a big uh, risk for me to uh, to uh, to, sh to share that. I can already see the pipeline as it comes to uh, as it is going into into the customer. I think the second thing that you see is a lot of focus on optimization and a lot of that optimization done automatically for the customer without the customer need without the customer need to proactively define and set things um, i think it is it is a very very strong trend where both uh, optimization for scale optimization for performance optimization for cost are kind of built into into the offering i think as we're scaling into the cloud you'll see significant growth in the amount of offerings coming from vendors, including uh, NetApp and AWS, but also increased consumption of the customers that are will expect more and more of it to be to be automatic. I think the last thing that I that I think we are going to see accelerating in 2021 is system of record moving into the cloud. The innovation is already done in a cloud first approach in, in, in almost all cases, but what we're going to see is significant uh, acceleration in the amount of system of records moving uh, moving into the cloud, analytics uh, moving into the cloud, and we're going to see it done by mainstream companies in a very, very large scale. Lots of things to look forward to. Ronan, thank you for joining me on the Cube today and sharing what's the latest updates with NetApp and AWS and the opportunities for your customers. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Lisa. It was a pleasure to, to, to meet you virtually. Likewise, maybe sometime at some event, we'll come back and we'll get to meet in person. I hope so. For Ronan Schwartz, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE.